Hello and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to you. Welcome back to me as well, because if you've been here for any length of time, you know that the last few months have been a little bit rough over here. And today's video is not really about that, but I did want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who has sent me so many amazing comments, so much encouragement. It has really meant a lot to me and I'm just so impressed and just thankful for the sewing community. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for that. While I have not been very active online over the last couple of months, I have been busy behind the scenes working on new sewing patterns. And today I'm really excited to introduce you guys to the Vivi blouse and dress pattern. This is a notched collar button up shirt dress. It comes with a sleeveless option and an option with sleeves. And I'm gonna be making the sleeveless mini length version of this dress. So the mini length is right above the knees. The midi length is at the ankles. And then it also comes with a version that is like a button up blouse kind of hip length with sleeves. Recommended fabrics for this pattern are going to be woven, so not a knit fabric, a woven fabric that is either non-stretch or stretch. Both would work just fine for this pattern. So fabrics like denim, like a lightweight denim is gonna be great for this. Linen is awesome for this. I've made a version for myself out of linen. A cotton poplin is gonna be good. I've made the shirt version for myself out of the cotton stretch poplin, which is a very common fabric that you can find in a lot of fabric stores. And when choosing a fabric, I would recommend something that is a medium to lightweight. I'm gonna be making this out of a lightweight denim that I picked up at Joann Fabrics. This is a seven ounce denim, I believe. So it does feel pretty lightweight. I've already washed and dried the fabric to prepare it for sewing. In addition to your main fabric, you're also gonna need interfacing. I'll put on the screen here the interfacing, the name of the interfacing that I'm using for this pattern, but it is a relatively lightweight interfacing and it's a fusible interfacing, which means that I can adhere it to the fabric with an iron. You're also gonna need buttons and I have specified in the pattern the number of buttons that you'll need for each version. And I've also assembled my pattern. The PDF comes as a layered PDF, so all of the sizes can be turned off and on. I typically print with all of the sizes turned on just so that I can always be checking the pattern <laughs> to make sure everything looks okay. But you can turn off any of the sizes that you don't need. If you have any questions about buying and downloading and printing and assembling PDF patterns, I also have a video here on the channel for how to do that that'll kind of walk you through the process. I'll link that as well. This pattern is available in US sizes zero through 30. I'll put the max dimensions on the screen here. And then it also is available in a B cup, a C cup, and a D cup. Now, if you're unfamiliar with cup sizes and sewing patterns, they're not the same thing as your bra cup size, but there is some guidance in the pattern for how to measure yourself and select the right size. I'm so chatty today because I have not filmed in forever. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna get started cutting out the pattern from my denim here and then we will move on to the next step. Also, if you're sewing the sleeveless version, you'll wanna trim off the edge of the shoulder here. There is a line that's marked for that, but the shoulder edge does come in just a little bit on the sleeveless version. And if you don't trim this off, the facings will not fit. And I would recommend just kind of hanging onto this and, and tacking it back on there if you want to sew the version with sleeves. So I've got all of my pieces cut out. I also went through and cut out all of the interfacing for the facings and the collars. So we are good to go on that. And then the next thing we wanna do is to stay stitch the neckline and the armholes of the bodice pieces. The reason we do this is because since those are cut in curved shapes, parts of those curved areas are actually on the bias. So they are more prone to stretching out during construction and we wanna prevent that. So we'll just use a regular straight stitch and stitch within the seam allowance, probably around 3 8 inch along each of the necklines and armholes on the front and back bodice. For this project, I'm going to be using Guterman all-purpose polyester thread for all of the seams. And I'll be using a universal Schmetz sewing machine needle in the size 8012. Next, I'm going to prepare the facings. So I'm going to attach the facings right sides together with the interfacing. And so I've got the interfacing adhesive side up, so it's a little bit rough on this side. This is the side that's facing up and I've got the smooth side, right sides together with the facing, and also along this outer edge here with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
Once I have the interfacing sewn to the facing, I'm just going to trim off this seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch. Then I can also go in and clip some of these outer curves just to make those a little bit easier to turn and less bulky. And when you're clipping curves that are on the outer edge like this, you wanna clip little triangles because when you turn it in, those curves kind of start to bunch up a little bit. So that just kind of takes a little bit of that out of the circumference there. So I have done this for all of the facings. So while my iron is heating up, I'm just going to start turning these facings right side out so that the interfacing would be adhesive side to the wrong side of fabric. And then I'll flip it over and adhere the interfacing to the facing from the fabric side. And I'm doing it from the fabric side so that the interfacing does not stick to my iron. And I'll do this for all of the facings. Ideally, you wanna let this cool before you pick it up just to make sure that it's fully adhered. I usually get a little impatient. I just wanna look at it. So anyway, and you can see that that is really nicely finished with the interfacing on the back side, and then that edge is where we had that seam and it's just a really nice clean way to finish your facings. And then this will be the edge that's exposed on the interior of the bodice, um, but it'll just have a nice clean edge on it, which is just, I like to finish them like that. I think it just looks really nice. And for the collar, I just interfaced the collar directly without doing the, the flip and turn and press method. I've also prepped the front and back bodice by sewing the darts and pressing those to the side seam and the waist. I spent a little bit of time yesterday starting on the bodice assembly. And I ended up actually doing this a little bit in a different order than what is in the instructions, but it still works the same. So I attached the two back bodice pieces together along the center back seam with a French seam. And I did the same thing at the shoulders of the front and back bodice. So I've got those connected and now I can start attaching the facings. And I'm just going to connect the front and back armhole facings, the right sides together, attach at the shoulders with a regular seam at 5 8 inch, and then I'm gonna serge and trim that seam allowance down. That's just gonna be a little bit less bulky than having the French seam there. I'm just going to lay the bodice right side up and then align each facing with its corresponding armhole, right sides together. And there are notches on the facings and on the armhole. So there's a single notch for the front and a double notch for the back. So that'll help you kind of remember which way to line it up. And I have the seam allowance pressed toward the front on the facing and toward the back on the bodice. It just makes it easier to get that seam allowance in line right there. And so with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, I'll do this for both sides. I'm just gonna trim that seam allowance down to reduce the bulk. I'm doing about a quarter inch here. Next, I just wanna press the facings away from the bodice and make sure that the seam allowance is pressed toward the facing. So I'll basically just fold the facing over the seam allowance like so and press that. And then once I have that pressed away from the bodice, I'm just gonna go in and understitch that seam allowance to the facing along the entire armhole for both sides. So you can see here, I got that stitching really close to the seam there, and that's just holding that little bit of seam allowance down. This is gonna help keep the facing turned toward the inside of the bodice once we finish all of the bodice construction. Now I just wanna press the facings back toward the interior of the bodice. So now that we have the facings installed, we can sew the side seams of the bodice. Open the facings, just pull them out from the bodice, align those at the side seam. And we're gonna do a French seam for this again. I'll do that on both sides. So once I have this sewn, one thing I wanna do is just clip into the seam allowance here at the underarm below the facing. And that way when I press the facing down and press the seam allowances, I can press them in opposite directions so that this lays really nice and flat. So I'll press the seam allowance of the bodice toward the back bodice and the seam allowance of the facing will press toward the front bodice. To finish the facings, you have a couple of options here. You can just stitch the facing to the bodice at the shoulder seam and the side seam, do a little stitch in the ditch, or you can top stitch the facings along the edge all the way around the armhole. Both methods are gonna help keep that facing you know, turn toward the interior of the bodice. And for a more utilitarian fabric like denim, I think that more top stitching actually looks pretty good on denim. And as this kind of weathers with wear, I think that that additional top stitching will just look really nice. So I'm gonna stitch all the way around the armhole and I'm gonna do it right along the edge of the facing finish. Now we're 
ready to work on the collar, preparing the collar to attach it to the bodice. So we have an upper collar and an under collar. The upper collar is interfaced for stabilization. And then the under collar you'll notice is just slightly smaller than the upper collar by about an eighth of an inch on three sides. So we'll have to ease in the under collar to the upper collar and give it a little bit of a stretch. And this is gonna aid in keeping the collar turned down once the whole assembly is finished. So I'm gonna put these right sides together and I'm gonna sew along three sides. So the two short sides and the top of the collar with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then I'll grade that seam allowance down. So I'll trim one side down to probably about an eighth of an inch and the other side down to about half and flip that right side out and press the collar really well, making sure to get all of the corners fully pressed out. So one question that I get sometimes is why do I have such a big seam allowance that I just end up trimming off? That's just because it makes it a lot easier to get that neater finish. You can trim off all of the rough edges and also having a consistent seam allowance throughout the pattern just makes it easier for instruction. You know, cause sometimes people get into a flow with sewing and they may not pay attention to a bunch of different changing seam allowances. So it's really just a matter of consistency as well. I also get asked what iron I use. And to be totally honest, like this is not really the best iron. I actually can't even use it with steam because anytime I put water into it, it just spurts out everywhere and puts little water stains all over everything. Thing. So I don't use it with steam. When I do need some steam, I have one of these little misting bottles here that puts a really nice fine mist on things. I'll put a link to my Amazon storefront below if you want to get one of these. I love these things. But yeah, I, I really, this is a Shark Professional 1600 watt. I don't love this iron, but I mean, it does well enough that I can get the job done. Um, and I've had it for a long time. But one day when it finally does go kaput, I'm gonna get a much nicer iron. I don't even know what kind of iron I wanna get yet, but it will not be this iron. So I've got the collar prepped here, and you can see that there's a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the under collar and upper collar. I wanna just pull that together, and I'm gonna pin it in place. This is an optional step, and I don't actually think I even have this in the instructions, but this is also going to further aid in keeping that collar turned under. So I'm just pulling that edge of the bottom of the collar together and I'm going to stitch at 3 8 of an inch along that edge to keep those pieces in place and I like to do that before I attach it to the to the neckline because um, it just kind of keeps those edges together as they should be. With the collar prepped now we can attach it to the bodice. So I've got the bodice here I'm placing the bodice right side facing up and kind of opening up the neckline there and on the bodice you'll notice that you've got notches at the front here. That is where the end of the collar will go. And then I'll also line up the collar first with the center back. So I've got a notch on the collar and I wanna make sure that I'm aligning this with the under collar. The uninterfaced part of the collar is going to be right sides together with the bodice. So this is the interfaced portion. The upper collar will be facing up. So I'm gonna first align that with the center back. There's also a notch for the shoulder seam and the end with that notch on the front of the bodice. And I'm gonna sew that to the neckline with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And you're gonna to have to kind of ease that in because that is a curve. It's a little bit stiff right now and we will eventually clip into this, but I just wanna get the collar sewn on first before we do any clipping. So, you know, you can get kind of aggressive with it, really ease it in there um, along the entire collar. Make sure you get any kind of lumps and bumps out underneath here too. So just be really careful, take your time with this step. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Don't have any major lumps or bumps here in the neckline. So now I do want to go ahead, I'm gonna turn this actually over so I can see the bodice. I just wanna go in and kind of clip into the neckline here, making sure not to clip the actual stitching. This is gonna help just kind of release that curve a little bit, make it a little easier to attach the facings. And yes, my scissors are dull because you know what? I do one big really wrong thing in sewing. I use my sewing scissors to cut paper. <laughs> I apologize to the sewing gods. I cannot be trusted, but that's mostly because I use my rotary cutter for most of my cutting anyway. Okay, so there, that kind of allows that to open up a little bit more um, and it's gonna just make it a little easier to attach the facings. So now we can prep the 
lapel facings and the back neckline facing to attach to the bodice. We're gonna do this the same way that we did for the armhole facings when we attached them to the shoulders. And I'm just going to attach the back neckline facing to the shoulders of the lapel facings. And I'm making sure that the finished edges are aligned. So this is the finished edge of the lapel facing aligned with the finished edge of the neckline facing. So I've just finished the seam allowance the same way I did for the facings at the armhole with the surged finish there. I'm going to press those seam allowances toward the front facings. And then I will align that with the front bodice, sandwiching the collar between the bodice and the facings. This is probably the most complicated step of this entire pattern, just because you have to kind of finesse it a little bit to get everything to align just right. Um, but if you're patient and you use lots of pins, you can do it. Again, we're gonna have to do some kind of stretching and easing in here. The nice thing about fabric is that it is quite malleable and you can get pretty firm with it. So don't let the fabric push you around. And I also wanna make sure I match up those notches on the center front bodice as well. Okay, try not to poke myself, which I've been doing a lot of lately. Now I'm just gonna sew the facing to the bodice, starting at the waist of one side, sewing all the way around the neckline and down to the other side with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I did notice that I got one little funky bump right here that I accidentally sewed in. If that happens, it's not a big deal. You can get your seam ripper and just open that up. It's kind of hard to see because of the texture of the denim here. But I'm just taking out just that portion of the seam right there, just carefully seam ripping just that one little spot until I get it to a point where I feel like I can kind of like stretch it out, sort of smooth out that spot. And then I'll just go right back over that one little spot to fix it. All right, the hard part is over. This is the most challenging part of putting together this particular pattern and we made it, we did it. So that looks pretty good. Now I just want to grade the seam allowance of this entire lapel and neckline facing and then we're gonna turn that right side out probably go ahead and just clip into this before we trim everything away. I just want to clip the corners of the lapel here and I'm going to turn this right side out. Make sure I poke that out really nice and good. And I'm gonna give those facings a really good press all the way around the lapel and the center front and the neckline. And I'm making sure that I really press that seam edge all the way out, you know, so that there's none of that seam rolling in too much to the interior of the bodice. And I'll go around the neckline as well. And now you can see that that notch for the collar, that's where that is there. And we're pretty much done with the bodice, aside from top stitching the lapel and the collar and doing a little bit of decorative top stitching there too, and also attaching the pockets. But we'll wait to do those until after we get the skirt attached. All right, so I went ahead and prepped the skirt. First, just sewed the center back seam with a French seam. Then I added the skirt facings to the front skirt pieces of the center front, the same way, same installation technique for all of the other facings, but these are actually a little bit easier because they're just straight. Um, so I sewed those on, trimmed down the seam allowance, understitched, and then pressed those to the interior. And then I sewed the front skirt pieces to the back skirt with French seams again. So now I've got my skirt assembled and I wanna attach the skirt to the bodice. So I'm gonna turn the skirt over so that it is wrong side facing down. And I'm going to lay the bodice wrong side up so that right sides are together. And I'm just gonna align the waist of the bodice with the waist of the skirt. 
and sew that together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Instead of doing a French seam for this seam, we're actually going to be doing a flat filled seam. So once I get that 5 8 inch seam allowance sewn, I'll trim down the skirt side of the seam allowance to about half, then fold the bodice seam allowance over that to conceal it and then top stitch that down. All right, it is the next day and I just need to put the finishing touches on this dress. We're almost there. So the first thing I wanna do is actually try on the dress, kind of pin it in place and decide how long I wanna make it and do the hem. And to finish the bottom, I'm going to flip the placket kind of back on itself, stitch across that, and then when I flip it over, it'll kind of neatly finish the bottom of that hem at the placket point. Then I can fold the hem twice by about, I guess a half inch, and then top stitch that hem in place. I left the seam here at the facing loose, unfinished. I'm just gonna let that lay flat when I fold this down, just to help reduce the bulk there a little bit. So now that I have all of the facings attached and the skirt attached. I'm just gonna go around and stitch the facing all the way up the center front, around the collar and the lapels, and then back down to the other side. Then I can do the edge stitching, go around the lapels and the collar with that edge stitching to, you know, just give it a nice finished edge there. And then I can install my buttons and buttonholes. I'll be using my buttonhole foot on my sewing machine to install the buttonholes. And I'm gonna be spacing these about two and a half to three inches on center apart. Um, that's just kind of personal preference. That's how I like to space my buttonholes. And then to install the buttons, I'll use scotch tape to hold them in place. I can sew right through the scotch tape and then I can remove the tape once the buttons are attached. Okay, so the last step, we are almost done. So excited. I love how this is turning out, by the way. The last step is to attach the pockets, the breast pockets. Now you could attach these before you assemble the bodice, but I like to get everything assembled and then position the pockets on the dress and see where I like them the best. And so I've done that. I've prepped the pockets. I've got the ends folded under here, did a little hem or I guess a wide hem on the top and installed a buttonhole in the center. And I'm just gonna pin these to the front bodice and sew them in place. After I get these attached to the bodice, I'm gonna add a little button. And this button is actually a little bit different than the buttons on the rest of the dress, but I only had one small one that was similar to that. I need to get some more. So I do have two of these little lighter colored ones. I'm just gonna do these and I'll get some other buttons and replace them later. Um, but yeah, that's the last step. And then I can show you guys how this thing looks. this like quest over the last couple of years to add more dresses to my wardrobe. I've just been wanting to wear dresses more. They're so easy to wear, but sometimes I feel like a dress is a little too, you know, dressy, which feels kind of redundant to say, but it's nice to have some casual dresses in my wardrobe that I don't feel like I'm kind of going all out just to go run errands around town, especially in the warmer months when wearing a dress is just so much more comfortable. So a dress like this, I feel, is so wearable. It's not too dressy. It has a little bit of a casual vibe. The long sleeve version was kind of where I started with this pattern, which is kind of 
kind of funny because I feel like I'm gonna wear this sleeveless dress version more than that, but I was really inspired by some kind of 90s shirt styles, like a button up shirt style. It reminds me so much of a shirt that I had when I was in high school that I loved. I was seeing some things on like Reformation's website, kind of a similar style shirt. So that's kind of where I started with that. And I also wanted something that was semi fitted, so not super duper loose, but also not so tight that you feel constricted. Anyway, I think this dress is just gonna work perfectly in my wardrobe. I have a list here of things I don't wanna to forget to tell you guys. And of course you can find the link to this pattern down in the description below this video over on patternscoutstudio.com, which is my website. I have several patterns over there that you can go check out. Most of them I do have sew alongs for. I'd also like to give a shout out to my patrons. I have a Patreon page. If you're interested in further supporting Pattern Scout and the work that I do here on YouTube, you can become a member over there. I do occasionally post additional content that's just for the members over on Patreon. And sometimes I'll have little patterns or digital downloads that go along with some of the videos that I do here on YouTube. And any of your support is greatly appreciated. So if you wanna join us over there, be sure to check out the link below in the description. And if you did enjoy today's video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.